was an artistic giant in his day, but there hasn't been a major exhibit of, Franz, uh, of Francisco Goya's work in the United States in 25 years. That is, until now. And with Halloween right around the corner, the MFA's new retrospective is very timely. WGBH News arts editor Jared Bowen has more. He could be the Prince of Darkness, was certainly the Prince of Portraiture. The Spanish master Francisco Goya was an artist who spent a lifetime in the 17 and 1800s careening between subjects, royalty, bullfighters, witchcraft. He had an amazing emotional gamut and kind of uh, must have been considering multiple things at one time. And this exhibition wanted to make clear that uh, he could do almost everything. Including processing life on the canvas between the two poles of order and disorder. The title co-curators Frederick Ilchman and Stephanie Loeb have given this monumental Museum of Fine Arts show. Goya lived in extraordinary times. He was uh, witness to the the time of the American Revolution, the French Revolution, the Napoleonic invasion of Spain, famine, torture, uh, major institutions like the church, the Inquisition, governments rising and falling. Uh, so there's a lot of disorder in Goya's lifetime. But any artist, any writer, tries to put order on things. You try to compartmentalize the world. You try to understand what's going on. So here we see, as Goya saw it, life in the balance. The genesis of the show began, says Stephanie Loeb, with two Goya drawings from the museum's own collection done 10 years apart. In one, there are skaters perfectly balanced. In the second, disorder and suggestions of madness that Goya would go on to document throughout his career. He dealt with people in tough situations and, and that he looked at victims. He didn't care so much about heroes. He looked at people in, in, in challenging times as well as facing the challenges of living. Goya's fame, not to mention the bread and butter that allowed him to creep into the darker corners of life, came from examining people. He was the darling of the aristocracy, who commissioned him, above all others, to paint their portraits. There's something unflinching about Goya's portraiture, and in certain cases you wonder, was he sympathetic to the client? I think it was a combination of something straightforward in the face, not too idealizing, and sometimes not idealizing at all, but a real attention to uh, minute details of costume or setting. One of the show's coups is the pairing of the Duke and Duchess of Alba. They were painted two years apart, and this may be the first time they've ever been side by side. Equally intriguing, Goya was reportedly quite enamored of the dark-haired Duchess. She is pointing down with her right hand to an amazing inscription in the ground which says, Solo Goya, only Goya, as if only Goya was allowed to paint her portrait. You know, she's that important. And only Goya could pull off a portrait that impressive. So it's an amazing uh, connection between the artist and, and the client. Goya's portraiture wasn't simply commercial. He returned to his own image time and time again. It was a painterly self-analysis. He was trying to figure out himself and figure out his place in the world in his self-portraits. He was uh, scrutinized all kinds of subject matter, but none more than himself. More daringly, Goya returned to the darker themes throughout his life. He was an aficionado of bullfighting and its vicious play of animal and human instincts. His migration into the macabre went even deeper, into a fascination with the mentally deranged. He was artistically subversive in that he went against the, the, the grain. And when you look at an awful lot of the works around him, you realize that he's working in a, in a de very different way. Um, there's a famous saying um, that he, he said, there are no rules. Which is why he also didn't shy away from witchcraft and the occult, subject matter that was snatched up by private collectors with a taste for the bizarre. The idea, of course, is you're supposed to look at these and feel a little shiver and be glad that, hey, that's not you, right? But at the same time, he was doing large traditional religious works for churches in Madrid and elsewhere. Uh, and I think he was able to, uh, you know, walk the tightrope. That balance culminates in the show's final gallery. We find Goya here, late in a life beset with illness and deafness. He's in the embrace of a physician. The contrast of the two faces shows just how sick Goya is. But also this is the moment when the healing begins. What's in the glass, presumably medicine, will help cure him. And by the vigorous brushwork you see in the painting, I mean, it's so competently and confidently uh, handled, it's clear that the recovery was complete. It's a near final analysis of the human condition, 
for all of its order and disorder. The Goya exhibit at the MFA runs through January 19th. Well, as I wind down my duties here at Greater Boston, I'm conducting a series of interviews with people who have elevated the show over the years. Celtics co-owner Wick Grosbeck is my guest tomorrow, one day after the team's season's opener. 